You know, one thing is, is I, I remember when, when they, when this opened, you know, and I was, I think this is the 1804 tray. Yeah, right. yeah. And then seeing these dollars without like any context of price or value, it's, just, oh, it's like, it's almost like they're not real. You know, it's the great stories that make these coins great, not just the coins themselves. So Jeff, this display uh, centers around the allure of money, and there's a uh, some major prominent collections here on display, but there's also, uh, it seems like an assortment of objects that, that draw you into why numismatics is such an interesting field. All right. You know, the allure of money is, the, the idea on these things is we've got different uh, points, you've got the American rarities. This is a, an important collection of uh, Russian coins. Then the, the Lily collection, these are some objects here from the, that came from that, which is a whole great story in itself. Then, uh, and then here we have about collecting money. And which is, this is an important part that I was really happy to have in the collection. A lot of times the museums have like great objects, but they don't really talk about collecting as much. And with coin collecting, you know, it's really, there wouldn't be all these things unless someone had collected them at some point. So right. it, this, this is a, you know, this is an example of the very first Red Book. It's a prototype of the Red Book. This is one of the earliest auction catalogs in America. Um, and then down here is the, uh, like a current thing for collecting a Whitman, a Whitman album, which is, a blue Whitman album is like that is exactly what I started collecting when I was a kid, probably 40 some 45 years ago. The Smithsonian collection is not just about the early coinage and all the great rarities. It's a, it's really, it tells the whole story of American coinage. But the collection actually is still being collected today. I mean, so when the U.S. Mint makes something, they try to make an effort to get those objects to, to, to be part of the collection. And um, there's, you know, as we know, there's a lot of different things that be there, the U.S. Mint still makes. And interspersed with that, there's actually some great rarities that, that, that do occur occasionally. And some things that we were, the Smithsonian is very lucky to have 
in 2009 when they were uh, going to develop the 2009 Ultra High Relief uh, Double Eagle, they did uh, die, pat, die trials and patterns, and uh, these. So these would now be considered part of the pattern series of United States coinage, and uh, when that someday they'll probably be added into the, in the Judd book, yeah. into, into the Judd book. And when you see like one of these objects here, um, this is a 2009 uh, feasibility study. They say, and these were made in Perth, Mint, Australia. Wow. wow. So that's really kind of interesting because they had more advanced uh, mining technology. So they were still the U.S. Mint was, and, it, and it's funny because. 2000 and in, in 1907 they had the technology they were making ultra high relief double eagles, right, right. but that technology must have either gotten lost or uh, the, the the U.S. Mint really had to work on you know, trying to retool to, to be able to do that. So these pieces are really fantasy pieces that are really that are not uh, they have like a like a almost looks like, like, like a, a looks blimp like a... or something on them. So there's some just some weird designs, but and then they they go uh, they put in here really when they were made they say June 6th this one was made. That one was made uh, in January. This is June twelfth, um, and they've got some. You know, you can see this one doesn't have like quite the proof-like finish on it. So, this is like this is like a just working on the on the ultra high relief concept without the design, and then going through the thing. So, these really, you know, probably a hundred years from now, these are people look at this like those are like unbelievable rarities because they're all unique and you know worth millions and millions and millions of dollars. So, okay. and they were made just seven years ago. Yeah, just made a few years ago, and yeah. these are. So these are these are future mega rarities that'll probably be on exhibit sometime in uh, in the next hundred years. So, Jeff, when we were in the vaults, you were talking about a recent rediscovery you made. And this was an item that was donated to the Smithsonian by the Stack family in the 1960s. And it was a sketchbook, which belonged to famous coin designer George T. Morgan. But what was it about the sketchbook that was so fascinating to you? Well, when I saw the sketchbook, um, like I mentioned earlier, I was here doing research for my Encyclopedia of the United States Gold Coins. And I was going through drawers. And I was looking at different uh, artwork from, from, other, from other coin designers. And... And I was flipping through the pages. I was uh, looking at the different ones. It was like a lot of like, you'll see here, like this is Angel's Wings. I mean, he was, you know, sketching and, and doing different things. And, you know, you really appreciate the art. But then I came across this page. And this page, when I look at it, it's like, that's a really neat uh, coin design. And uh, it has to do with like a trade motive. But what makes it really, really brings it to life is cool. It's in his handwriting here. It says, design for $100 gold coin. Um, and it says George Morgan, 1876. And that's really fascinating because they didn't make a $100 gold coin. The, the biggest denomination that the U.S. Mint made was a $50 gold coin. And that was patterns that were made the following year. And we saw that downstairs. Those are downstairs. And those are considered like, you know, phenomenal, you know, uh, some of the greatest coins ever, ever minted by the U.S. Mint. So, you know, when you fantasize about what it would have been to seen a coin as big as those are, to see a coin that would have been even twice the size of that, and that was a um, that would have been a five ounce gold coin, and uh, those are downstairs are called uh, half unions, and um, these these this denomination the hundred dollars is a union, so that would be like the double eagles you have for a twenty dollar gold coin, these have a name uh, been called the union, so this would have been uh, a uh, would have been a denomination that. Has, has still hasn't been made by the U.S. government. They made other, 1915, they made $50 gold coins, but they have never made a $100 gold coin. And it's really a gorgeous, it would have been a gorgeous coin to, to fantasize about. This tray of coins you have here, if we were at a coin show, this would be like basically the whole show. You could go home after you stopped and looked at these. Yeah, there was, there was some, there's some really wonderful objects. And, uh, uh, you know, this is just a literally like a tip of the iceberg type thing. There's a case uh, in the back room that has 
you know, rows and rows of coins like this. Uh, I chose these particular objects because they each tell a different kind of story. So I think that would be interesting if you want to talk about the different ones that uh, what they're all about. Sure. Let's look at. Let's start with. Uh, let's start with this twenty seven D, and then. Well, the twenty seven, the nineteen twenty seven D twenty. What um, is fascinating about this coin? This this kind of tells the story. In nineteen twenty three, I believe it was, the U.S. Mint collection was transferred to the um, to the Smithsonian. But when the U.S. Mint transferred the collection, they didn't just forget about it and like here it is, and they're out of the coin collecting business. They continued to send coins over to the Smithsonian. They would send at least one or two examples of the coinage as they as they were made, and the twenty nineteen twenty seven D twenty here is a is a good example. The coin is nearly flawless. Um, and they have two or three of them that were there were I think there were two sent over at the time. Sometimes they also would send over pieces that went through the assay process, so they get one from the collection and, and from the assay. So the US, the Smithsonian collection has um, of St. God and twenties like nineteen twenty seven D, uh, nineteen twenty one, nineteen you know the thirties. They have all these coins. They have su unbelievably su superb examples of those and also the 10 Indians and, and the other coins like 0905. So they would, once the coins uh, came over, it's just sort, sort of an example of how they, you know, even 1933 20s, there's two of those that were sent over. So the U.S. Mint just didn't give the collection to the and to the U.S. and forget, I mean, to the Smithsonian and forget about it. They continued the process. So the, uh, the collection also has a, a very deep reservoir of pattern coins. Well, I, I pulled out two pattern coins. This is one of the classics, um, of the uh, of the of all United States patterns, it's not the rarest one, but it's one of the it's one of the classics called the schoolgirl dollar. Um, it's one of my personal favorite designs. Um, this is one of the considered one of the more beautiful of the pattern designs. It's uh, it's, it's got a, uh, a girl a flowing hair, Liberty on the front, and it's uh, nicknamed the schoolgirl dollar. But it's just it's one of the my and it's also a silver dollar pattern. So those are particularly uh, popular as well. Um, the other pattern. That I selected out that, that I that's uh, uh, why it's important. This 1891 barber half dollar. So everybody knows the series started in 1892, but the Smithsonian collection has about uh, four or five um, of the half dollars in, with different designs on them, and each one of them is unique. So they're uh, and they also have a dime in the quarters in addition to the half dollars, and it's really neat. It's it's really fun to be able to see a coin with four or five different examples, and each one of them is unique. So if you want to see one of them, this is the only place you would actually see this design except looking in a book. So they're, they're all unique with the design. So this is, uh, from a quality perspective, this is actually one of my favorite coins in the entire collection. This is an 1828 um, Half Eagle, and it is in uh, proof condition. And if you can see the coin, the coin is, uh, it looks like something that was made, you know, last week. The coin is unbelievable as far as uh, mirror finish, uh, strike. And the, the U.S. Mint Collection is the reference collection on proof coinage of the United States. Um, most, most experts recognize that proof coinage started in 1818, the, but they didn't make gold coins. And, uh, um, you know, they, they don't, they don't, there was no proof gold coins from 1818. It was like, the, I think it was a penny. Um, and a quarter and a half dollar, and those are in the collection. But then later on, the, the and, and then the, those weren't quite as mirrored, so the, the process got a little bit better. But by 1828, they were making coins of quality. Uh, amazingly, they were making coins that are quality the same they're making today. So tell me about this high relief, uh, ultra high relief saint. Uh, well, the ultra high relief saint is um, the reason that this I pulled this coin out is hands down probably most people consider the most beautiful coin ever made. I mean, it's, uh, you know, you go, you go, and I'm talking going back 2,500 years of history. If you look at, you lay them all out and you look from an artistic uh, standpoint, this coin uh, stands alone as, as far as beauty. Uh, when I wrote my book, 100 Greatest U.S. Coins, um, uh, one of the statements I said in the book, it's a shame it's such a rare coin because it's a coin that every collector should own. If you, if you, if money was no object, it's the one coin you should, you should have because it's, you know, it's, it's just absolutely gorgeous. Um, as pe most people probably know, Teddy Roosevelt uh, asked Augustus St. Gaudens in around 1905-1906 to redesign our coinage. He was the premier artist at the time, a sculptor. He did sculptures in uh, the one is the Sherman statue in uh, Central Park. He was, you know, famous for that. But he he was, you know, he was he was really kind of a rock star celebrity at the time as far as uh, his art. And uh, he labored on these designs for quite a while and um, put this put this together. And this was his vision. 
uh, of what you know the, the coinage could be. Um, this this object here is one of my uh, personal favorites, uh, not because of uh, well, it is rare, it's unique, but it's when I was uh, doing research for my book, the um, uh, uh, Encyclopedia of the United States Gold Coins. This is a coin that I discovered in the collection, so it was it was. Uh, you know, to me, it was very, very exciting to actually find a coin that no one knew existed. And it's a 1915 Pan Pacific two and a half, and the coin is a Roman Finnish proof. Um, uh, I've had it verified by other experts who are, who are you know, I think I, I, I was pretty sure what it was, but I wanted to have other people look at it to make sure that they all agreed on it. But it's a, it's a uh, made 1915, and it's in the Roman Finnish style, and the coin's a proof condition. Um, then the last point I have here is uh, this is a, uh, this is like the king of liberty coinage. It's 1850 for us, uh, 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 half eagle, and there's only three or four known. Uh, the, one of these is in the Poe collection. The Smithsonian collection um, uh, has, has this example from the Lilly collection. It's a uh, you know, beautiful condition, and it's also a good story coin because one of the coins that was uh, known of this example was in the DuPont collection. That coin was stolen and never recovered. So that's one of the great coins that uh, might show up again someday. But uh, anybody who likes Liberty uh, gold coinage would uh, be attracted to this because it's, it's uh, if anybody, you know, that was a really long series. It went from 1838 to 1907, and a lot of people collect them in the different, uh, in the, in, in the different um, denominations. You know, the Charlotte coins, the Lonega coins, uh, you know, they made them at seven different mints uh, on the Liberty Fives. But this is uh, hands down the, ki the king of that, of that series. Check your coin star machine for that, that DuPont coin. That's right, that's right. <laughs>